uh, two weeks ago, he texted me, how are you? Are, are, what are you doing? Are you, are you uh, doing stand-up? And I answered him with, you know, much too many words. And then I didn't hear back. And then last week, last week I got a text. And it just said, I love you. And I didn't say much back. I just said, I love you, Norm. And that was my last communication with him. But he didn't mince words. And he didn't mince emotions. So he wasn't out doing bullshit. He wasn't just out to, you know, oh, here's the emotional moment in a telethon where we pretend we're feeling something so we can... Uh, one of the gifts of my life is that he loved me and that I loved him. Hell, I'm always going to love him. I mean, there's not another guy like this guy. You know, because so many people like pretend that they don't give a fuck, you know, both in my business and in other businesses. You got to be, I don't give a, f hey, you know me, I don't give a fuck. You know, those people that advertise them. Like, that guy clearly, in the best way, didn't give a fuck. He really cared about people and stuff, but, like, like he did what he wanted to do. And when he was on SNL, how big a gig that was, because there were so few channels, the internet hadn't blown up yet, and even with basic cable and everything, I mean, it was still, if you were on Saturday Night Live and you were doing Weekend Update, it was one of the most coveted gigs a comedian could have and you were part of this lineage of you know at that point it was uh you know chevy chase um jane Curtin, right on through to dennis miller's reign when he did it and you know i did colin quinn come after i think colin came after but it was always just like the best of the best comics that they had doing it and continued on with tina fey and all of them and no one's walking away from that job. I mean, if some suit at NBC tells you they don't like the jokes you're doing and be funnier, you know, you're shaking in your... I would, I would be. I'd be like, oh, fuck, you know, I'm going to lose this big gig. I don't want to get fired. I don't want to piss these people off or whatever. I guess he was doing all those OJ jokes and somebody... I forget how the story went. There was somebody there that knew OJ or something and was telling him telling norm to back off and move on to something else <laughs> so what does norm do he just doubles down and he just does even more oj jokes which is like you know the balls that that took to do that and he ended up losing the gig he got fired and he was and people loved him and he was fucking hilarious but he you know he didn't back down to the to the to the big fucking guy over there and he ended up losing the gig. So you know, as luck would have it, I think it was dirty work came out like a year and a half later or so. So he has to promote it and he's on the press thing, so Lauren has him back and has him host the show. And I remember he went out there and his opening joke this opening joke, he just comes out, and he was just like, uh, yeah, you know, something, something like this, was, yeah, it's uh, good to be back, you know, I uh, actually got fired from this show uh, about a year and a half ago, because they said it wasn't funny, and uh, now here I am, I'm hosting this show, so that means one of two things, either I got a lot funnier, or this show sucks. Well, I've had this gnawing regret uh, this last day and a half, and it's reading all this praise for Norm, which again I, I believe is completely justified yeah. and, and will endure. Um, and it's been a regret that um, he had he didn't get to experience this. You know, he took so much flack in his career. He took so much shit. Um, and yes, he knew that he had fans, but uh, I wish, you know, it's a common wish for people, but I wish he had been able to read the stuff that's being mm -hmm. written about him. 
I wish he knew how beloved he is. And also um, how uh, in awe comedians are yeah. of, of, of what he did and what he meant and how, um, you know. How important he was to the people who are probably the most important people in the world to him. Yeah. You know. And he, uh, you know, I wish... I wish he knew that, and yeah. and and that's the one regret I I, uh, you know, he kept he kept his illness a complete secret from everybody. Everybody, and um, and that was his choice, and I respect that choice. See how it's done. But selfishly, for me, I wish I had had the chance, and I, I wish a lot of us wish we had had the chance to go in and tell him. Yeah. You are a singular artist, and you've really made a huge difference. And you've, I mean, if nothing else, uh, I don't, I don't know of anybody that could make me laugh like that. And, and one of the things that speaks to, you know, I, I uh, was having a conversation with um, Jim Downey. Uh, and and in the in the wake of norm's death and jim downey and i was trying to get to the what is it that made norm so different and he s reminded me he said you know on weekend update we would do um there's a dress rehearsal which i know because yeah. i worked at Saturday Night live there's a dress rehearsal and he said the best way to test a joke on weekend update is at dress rehearsal if it does well at dress rehearsal it will do well on air uh, if it doesn't do well at dress rehearsal, it will bomb on air. That's, that's the best way to test it. <laughs> and he said that Norm would do a joke at dress rehearsal that they both loved, and it would get nothing. And when Weekend Update was over, Jim would say, um, yeah, it's too bad that joke didn't do well. And Norm would say, like, yeah, I know, but we got to do it. So he would do jokes yeah. that he knew were going to get nothing. Yeah. If he thought the joke was worthwhile... He didn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Now, that is very uncommon. That is very... Well, he never pandered. He didn't pander at all. And that takes... Um, you know, that's what made me think about the line you said so many years ago, Andy. Like, it, it almost terrifies me, his fearlessness, because it was um, the thing he did so many times on our show, which I thought was absolutely outrageous was um, he would launch into these long stories that you later, you quickly realized <laughs> were farmer's daughter jokes. Uh -huh. Or uh -huh. shaggy dog. Shaggy yeah, dog right. stories. Yeah, yeah. That, that, Just that, absolute horseshit. Absolute horse shit, yeah, yeah. horseshit stories. And he would go on and on and on. And I'm so happy that um, the moth joke has been getting circulated so much from our Tonight Show because... It is completely outrageous what he's doing. Uh, it is, um, you know, it's it's the it's the Tonight Show, and he is telling this very long story, and he's taking all the time in the world. And I love it just because, even though I was there, I'm delighted every time I see it. Yeah, I, I every time I see it, I'm delighted with it because. What he's doing is breaks every rule. You're not, you're not, you, <laughs> brevity is the soul of wit. That is the rule. Yep. Keep it, you know, and man, he completely, like Picasso blew up the form. He goes and he tells this joke forever and then finally gets to this punchline <laughs> and you can see that he's, everyone's delighted, uh, but he has broken every rule in the book, and I was asking, uh, I was talking to Lori Jo, uh, and I asked her if it's okay if I related this, and she said it was okay, but she said that not too long ago, um, someone asked Norm uh, about the moth story that he told on, on our Tonight Show, and that... <laughs> that she said what made the guy wanted to know what made you have the nerve to do that and that he said that you know it was that goddamn frank smiley <laughs> he said <laughs> i was only supposed to do one segment and then suddenly in the commercial break frank came over and said like you're doing another one because whenever i had norm i was greedy i wanted more norm 
I always wanted more Norm. And so he didn't know that he was that we were going to ask him to do a second segment. He had nothing planned, mm -hmm. absolutely right. nothing planned. That's true. <laughs> and so true. as recently as like not that long ago, I think this was a couple of months ago, he was telling somebody, right. uh, "Damn it, <laughs> that was Frank Smiley." Hey, get back out there, Conan rocks more. So he heard that joke from Colin Quinn, uh -huh. and he did the segment. <laughs> And it was seven, he had seven minutes prepared. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and so he basically um, you said you know and then he's done. He's they done. Say we'll be right back with more Norm. And he goes, I've got nothing to say. Yeah. 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 So then he uh, he remembered the Colin <laughs> joke, and it was a twenty second joke. So he asked you, how long is the segment? Uh huh. And he was hoping you'd say 20 seconds. Right. But you said seven minutes. Yep, yep. So it became a seven-minute joke. Yeah. yeah, and he's and doing that. This has to be understood. He's doing this on the fly. Yep. So his way to slow it down that he came up with on the fly is he invents... It's a checkoff play. It's a checkoff play. With Russian names. With Russian names, and there's a sadness, an ineffable sadness in life yeah. weighing on the character's soul. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking... You know, uh, who – I've never met anybody who would take that chance uh, and make that choice, and I'll never meet anybody like him again. Well, he was the ballsiest comedian in the history of comedians. Uh, he, well, he was taking that, and he was saying, like, the joke doesn't matter. Like that – you know, he was – watching that, seeing that clip again – you're you're getting to see his brain. Yeah. He's just showing you his brain. And the notion that this is that the joke is the thing. The joke isn't the thing. No, it's the journey. It's taking yeah, a stroll sure. through this guy's brain and yeah. hearing the choices that he makes and what he has to say. And you know, and I think that that was like kind of what like there was so much of like what he you know would say like, "Well, that doesn't matter. This matters." Yeah. You know, and and what mattered to him was his own self-expression, was his own, was spreading his own kind of genius and his own point of view. Like, uh, there's a clip out, uh, he did some roast, and I and I remember seeing it at the time. I can't remember who it was that he was roasting, but all his jokes are things. It was things, Bob Saget. Was it Bob yeah. Saget? Yeah. And it was unbelievable. It was, yeah. it, but all the jokes were things like, you know, Bob often has a lot of things, on, or, you know, Bob often has things on his mind. It's when he's wearing a hat. <laughs> like it was all these <laughs> dad <laughs> jokes <laughs> bomb. intentionally <laughs> bombed. Right. Yeah. And then I, I didn't even know this, but I remember feeling like, okay, Norm, I mean, you know, these are funny and this is, and you're funny doing them because you can't help but be funny, but this is, feels a little hostile, you know, like yeah. why are, why are you breaking from what yeah. this, you know, it, you were invited to a costume party and you came, you know, in a tuxedo, you know, whatever. He didn't play by the rules of the thing. Turns out the producers told him, really go for it. Really get him. And Norm was like, ah, yeah, you're going to tell me what to do. Uh, here, I'll do this. I'll do the softest, lamest dad jokes I can come up with. Yeah. And, and it was just a fuck you to the producers. It, it was looked weird at the time. It was funny in a way, but it still was just like, it was Norm doing what the what? fuck he wanted to do. It was still hilarious. Yeah. 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 Norm is, it's like Norm couldn't not be funny. Yeah.